Hey, this is Phil, and this is part three of the implant planning tutorial. So in parts one and two, we've already created our panoramic curve. We've mapped our nerve. We've taken measurements in a couple of different ways. We've used the region of interest tool to crop out the maxilla and a few other things. So what are we doing next? So if we have a 3600, 3700, or if we've object scanned an impression or model, and you have the PDIP module, Prosthetic Driven Implant Planning. Those will then be available within our model icon over here. So we can select that, and you can see here is a 3600 scan. And we can go ahead and do an automatic alignment with the mandible. And the scan is merged and we can turn off our wireframes here. You can validate the accuracy of the merge by looking at our cross-sectional view and the green is your model that's merged over your CBCT. And you can see how it's nicely aligned over the occlusal aspect, nice and tight, so that's good. Now, obviously you don't have to merge a digital impression scan with every single case, but it can definitely be helpful in a variety of different cases. I'll show you one example here. So we've got this large edentulous span in the maxillary interior, and obviously placing implants here would be more challenging. But if we merged our digital impression scan and crop out some of the CBCT so we can visualize this a little better, at our crowns and now when we place our implants of course we have a much better visualization of where to place them angles and so on another good example of how it can be helpful to merge your impression scan and add your crowns is when you have patients with high amounts of scatter like you can see here so in this case uh, I've got it pretty much all planned already, so I'm not going to show you how to do it per se, but just uh, the value of doing it. So you can see here we've merged our model, and I will show you actually a little bit later in the video how to use this region of interest tool, which cleans up our scan nicely. Now, when we add our crowns, everything's really added nice and accurately. You can see everything, all that scatters out of the way. And of course, now we can plan our implants much more effectively. So now let's go back to our original plan. And this is where we left off. We've got our cross-sectionals positioned nicely, um, lower right side. We've got our model that's merged or our digital impression. Um, nerves are mapped out. So ready to add a crown. Again, this is part of the PDIP module. So if you don't have this, uh, you can ask your dealer or your rep. And we're going to select number 30. And places our crown in the general vicinity. And now we're ready to design and position it. So this is where using the region of interest tool can be very helpful. So right now I want to visualize and design the crown, but I've got the maxilla in the way. So one way to remove the maxilla is, like I showed you earlier in a previous video, we can use this little region of interest tool, which is in your curve slicing tab, and crop out the maxilla. But you can see here, it's also on this plane. So we're cutting off a little bit of the crowns uh, and the posterior here. Select OK. And it crops out the entire image, all your slice views, and your 3D rendering. And I can visualize things a little bit better that way. So that's one way. Let's put this back. And the other way with the region of interest tool is using this tool down here. Select little drop down arrow or triangle, go to 3D region of interest, and it pulls up this image. So what you want to do is position this so I can see all the way through the image at the occlusal plane, because I'm going to use this little cutting tool, draw a shape to remove the inside, or draw shape to preserve the inside. So either one will suffice. Select it, and now I can zoom in to be a little bit more accurate 
and I'm just going to do a single click all the way through. Now I can zoom back out again and cut out the entire maxilla. And now I can label it maxilla. Select OK. And I can do it one more time for the mandible. So it takes, you know, just a little bit longer to do it that way, but I like it because now I have the maxilla and the mandible here under my region of interest, and now I can simply toggle that on and off, making it a lot easier as I go forward, especially when treatment planning larger cases. It's very simple to then just toggle that on and off to visualize what I need to visualize. In this particular case, now I can go ahead and see my crown. So now when we go to our object area, we can select our crown and this little icon will center all of my views on that crown. And I can also then click on a 3D rendering of the crown and visualize everything here and manipulate exactly how I want. These yellow nodes will increase the crown or decrease in all the dimensions. So every single dimension, it will increase or decrease. And I can grab any of these little colored areas to center and turn. And then when I have the four arrows on the crown, that's where I can actually move the whole crown, more of a bodily movement of the crown itself. When I see the two arrows in those directions, that, that means I'm attached to one of the little movement handles to turn it. So in this case, I'd be on the green and I'm tilting it, okay? If I wanna stretch the crown in one dimension, for example, I wanna make it longer, bringing it down closer to the gingiva, um, I would actually use a little movement handle in one of the other views or the little movement right here. So when I put my finger on top of this, you can see, or put my mouse on top of this to see my finger. If you look at the lower left, the crown, as I go, you're stretching it in just that one dimension. And I can do the same thing here. And I can do the same thing if I want to stretch the crown buccolingually only and not move the other dimensions. I can grab it here, and now I'm stretching it in just that one dimension. So again, yellow nodes moves it in all dimensions, grabbing it from these other little nodes will move it in that one dimension.